My name is Deshae West. And I'm Moses Mosley. And this is our Epic Walking Dead review. First, I'd like to say thank you so much to Atlanta Movie Tours for allowing us to use their location. <laughs> also, if you're ever in Atlanta and you want to see the locations of The Hunger Games, The Walking Dead, so many other movies, come to Atlanta Movie Tours. Go to AtlantaMovieTours.com to book your tour today. You'll have an awesome time. A very awesome time. More awesome. Devil awesome. Super awesome. Fantastic awesome. Absolutely awesome. So this episode begins with the group going into Alexandria. Uh, it was a continuation from last week's episode where they stopped at the huge gates. Uh, and it was really cool just to see what was inside this community. And it was like almost that perfect situation that, you know, um, the guy came from. Everybody right. had nice clothes on. There was even somebody walking a dog. Yeah, I was like, like, I was like walking really? a dog in the, <laughs> the zombie apocalypse. And they just got done eating dogs? Uh, I was like, wow, really? <laughs> and then um, we almost immediately meet Deanna, who takes us into these um, almost reality television um, type uh, interviews. What did you, how did you feel about those? I thought it was I thought it was interesting, mm -hmm. but at the same point, you know, I understood why she did it. You know, she has to analyze them psychologically before she can actually appropriately integrate them into the society. But why know? record it? I think it's for future posterity, you know, because you never know how this is going to end and if, mm -hmm. like, save that community does go under, it helps to have some type of precursor to go by for future, you know, future people getting there so they know exactly what happened there, you mm -hmm. know, so it's just for, you know, future prosperity, future, future prosperity, prosperity. <laughs> For future posterity, you know, for historical records and things like that. I know. I got so excited. But yeah, like, that's, that's, that's what like, you get for trying to use big words. I know, right? It just comes out like that. No big words for you saying that, but I don't know. I think it's something else. I think maybe there's some secret. I haven't, re I haven't read the comic book, so I don't know what's going on, but when she mentioned the military, maybe there's some secret military experimentation going on, I don't know, with the, the compound, and that's why... That's kind of why the, maybe the reason why the barricades were from the outside in. That's a possibility, mm -hmm. you know, and like after like Terminus, like honestly, I don't believe anybody anymore. It's just like I'm on permanent lockdown, mm -hmm. pretty much, you know. Yeah. And it, I mean, it would kind of make sense that the government may be testing uh, out a new community. You know what I mean? I can understand that. I can see that. Because they are in like great shape. They have so much food. They have all these weapons. And nobody's. Speaking of food, where are they getting the food from? You I know, have no what, idea. That's, that's a red flag for me. It seemed like they were surrounded by woods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like that's like I don't know. Like mm -hmm. it's making me think they're eating each other or something. But what did you think about Rick getting clean shaven? I thought it was funny, you know, because mm -hmm. like I was really wondering like how they were going to integrate that into it, mm -hmm. and to see him doing it, I think it's like he's getting rejuvenated. You know, he's like he's gaining his his humanity back. You know, he's trying to like you know get back into the swing of things and everything. And like I can appreciate like that out with the old and with the new kind of you know um, kind of you know clarification they got and that you know transition they made for him you know. I you know um, in the beginning of the episode that's what I was thinking I was like oh this is kind of cool he's looking at himself in the mirror so he's having that little reflective moment where he's seeing himself as a barbarian and he wants to go back to right. what he was in the beginning um, that young cop which he ended up ending with but yeah. then I feel like it's all a lie he knows it's a lie he's just. He's just, you know, buying into the, the the moment. Yeah, it's like pretty much the damage with him psychologically has mm -hmm. been done. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, he's adapting to the situation to feel it out, to see like exactly where everything is gonna go. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he can still snap back into crazy if he needs to, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, he just like, he's staying on a guard mode, but he's still respecting his situation, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the whole, um, the whole, Oh, I was just in the shower moment yeah. with, uh, with the wife of the other guy. Right, Jesse. that was so funny. I was like, oh, he's oh, about to get was, some finally. I was just in the shower and you just happened to come. And then she's going to be like, can I cut your hair? I know. Can I cut your hair? <laughs> if that was my wife, we're getting divorced, okay? You're not cutting anybody's she's hair. She's going to be right? chopped up and fed to zombies. Right. I, I like. The way her husband looked at the end of that episode. That was funny. That was mm -hmm. one of the dun 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 moments I thought about, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like, the, the how creepy that was and like well for me I don't even think it was creepy I just felt like dang I feel like she cheating on him <laughs> I felt like he cut when she cut his hair it was like a moment of cheating oh and gosh <laughs> he just was like yeah you cut my wife's my wife cut your hair. <laughs> 
<laughs> See me, it was like my wife cut your hat. <laughs> and me, I can understand where you're coming from with it, but it's like you know, he didn't have to be that brooding with it. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like he caught them. You know, like half naked or something, you know, rolling around. It was just like you I know, don't know. I kind of inviting, you know, friendly. I kind of feel like giving a haircut is a little bit more interesting, <laughs> than, you know. <laughs> In a zombie apocalypse, you give a haircut, you no. might as well have, you yeah. have sex. Okay, it's going to uh, happen. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, how'd you feel about Carl? I think Carl, he's really, you know, he's 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 adapting, you know, because mm -hmm. like he's coming from a situation where his childhood was stripped from, you know, and these kids are like, you know, the typical. You know the red apple kids you know like they don't know so we think right you know they, it seems they, that way you know they're gonna end up like jabbing them in the head with the video game controller but, right yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you know he's trying to get back into that transition of things that swing of things that actually being a kid and being around people who well children his own age that haven't been through the things he has so mm. a part of him he has to hide that because they don't, they can't relate, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like he has to like make that transition. It's like a kind of like it's tearing him up, you know. But he kind of went fast though. I feel yeah. like he he made a faster transition than everybody else. I think he's like just smarter. Mm -hmm. he, he's like he's playing the situation. Because remember when um him when he was in the room by yeah. himself and Rick walked in, he actually said to him like, "They're weak," mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to become weak. Mm -hmm. And I think that shows his kind of character development and the fact that he recognizes what's happening. Now, are they weak or are they smart? Because obviously they, they have a great, you know, situation, living situation, whereas uh, Rick and Carl and all them, they've been living in the wild and being messed up and yeah. uh, hungry, starving. <laughs> so I don't know if they're, if they're necessarily weak or if they're just smart. I can say that I think they're intelligent in the way that they came together, mm -hmm. but still, like, in the means of survival, if you throw them out in the woods, I think they're less likely to survive than, you know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they were they were telling Rick in this in the um, in the group for a, a while. They knew everything about them, so That's obviously true. they were surviving in the woods some kind of way. That's true. I can understand that. Yeah. And they were surviving in the woods and had clean haircuts and yeah, nice true. shoes yeah. on. So. If you can be that clean in zombie apocalypse, uh -huh. it's like you know you got to know something. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. You know who's getting on my nerves though? Who? Michonne. Oh, and why, I love Michelle, but she's just too nice. She's like, yes, I think this place is great. I, I, I feel like we can, you know, live here. Sometimes I'm like, uh, come on. at first, at first I thought, okay, if Michelle has a good feeling about it, maybe it's a great place. But then they yeah. just plan it a little too much, a little too much. Like it's like in my face too much that she's like loving it. I think that she's transitioning into more of a mother figure, you know? Well, she's a, she's the opposite. She's the person who would never think, you know, that a place was safe. Would never, ever be like, I just oh. think she's learned to trust her senses, you know? No, no, I think they're just trying to get us geared up for something really big because yeah. the last person I would expect to um, be comfortable in a place is Michonne. See, so, me, the last person, she would be the second to the last, but the last person I'd mm -hmm. expect would be Daryl. Because, you know, he's been through so much and he already had trust issues already. Yeah, but so Daryl... Like, he still hasn't even warmed up yet. But to me, Daryl had his brother. And Daryl was in the group way before Michonne was. And he had a chance to acclimate to the group already and right. have a family. Michonne was on her own with two walkers for yeah. the longest time. Right. Um, separated for any, from any other human. So yeah. I feel like Michonne it was, should have been the last person to transform but now that she's one of the first people to transform, I feel like that means like they just gonna knock us over the head with something big because she shouldn't be like, oh yeah, everybody, either she gonna get stabbed in the stomach or something. No. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I feel like something big's gonna happen. I can see it coming, like, mm -hmm. like, like I said before, the build up is like something, something is about to go down. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, um, so how did you feel about the whole weird zombie, zombie in the woods? situation. Uh